Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be continuing our conversation about assembly. We are covering integer arithmetic. Let's get started. Addition. So here we are saying destination plus source and then the final result goes into the leftmost element. We have seen this already. The move instruction, right? It will be moving the rightmost into the leftmost, right? And there are some rules. So destination and source must be of the same size. Final result is stored into destination. Destination must be able to store value, which means that you cannot have, like for example, one comma and any sort of memory here. Why is that? Well, because you can add these two things, but then you can't store the final result into a number. Both operands cannot be memory. Addition we carry. This is used when adding two numbers larger than the register size. Why is that? So let's say you have two 32 bit numbers stored into two register and you're trying to get a sum but then the final result is a 64 bits number, so you won't be able to store it into the destination, which is a 32 bits register. So what you need to do is using the, this ADC instruction in a way which I'm going to show you later on. Basically what it does is adding the destination, the source, and the R flag. Right? So this is a special type of addition where the carry bit stored into the R flag is added to. Increment instruction. This will be the typical, let's say, A++ that you see um, in uh, modern languages. So you have increment and then the operand, which means operand equal to operand plus one. When a memory operand is used, the type has to be specified because those are, don't forget that those are label. You need to say how much of, the, of this label you are taking, right? Subtraction. So again, destination minus source and the result into destination. Again, source and destination have to be the same size. Both operands cannot be memory and destination cannot be a number. We, we've seen this already, right? One and register. It wouldn't make sense, right? Decrement instruction, again, a minus minus so again when a memory operand is used the type has to be specified because these two are labels so you need to tell the cpu how much of this label you are taking right next unsigned multiplication so when this is your source you multiply by 8 bits, the final result, sorry, is going to be for the upper part in the AH and the lower is going to be in the AL and so on. You can pause the video so you can have a look at this table while I'm going to move next. Sign multiplication, so you have the simple one, which behaves exactly like the previous one, and then you have this one. For IMM, I mean immediate values, which are number like one, two, four, and so on. And this allows you to specify destination, source, and an immediate number.
next sign and unsigned division div and i div this is unsigned and this one is signed so if this is your source then you're divided by a bits your result is going to be in al and the modulo is going to be in ah and so on you can pause the video and have a look at this table and now we are going to be having a look at examples first example so we move this value into the ecx and then the same we do with ebx and eax and then we multiply and then the result go into the eax and then we add the ecx and the result of the previous multiply right but there is a faster way to do this and it's using the lia instruction which allows you to do some arithmetic with the register so basically you move the number into these two register and then you do the same but straight with the register right so you multiply by two the abx and then you add ecx let's see how this work So I'm going to compile. And launch in my debugger. OK. First of all, we put a breakpoint here. We run. And then we do P dollar E. Yep, so we grab the value of this, right? This, if you grab your calculator, is equal to 5555 in hexadecimal, right? That's decimal system, hexadecimal, 555. Right? Okay, so we kill this. We remove breakpoint. Now we put the breakpoint right here and we run again. So now the value in EAX should be the same, right? So if I do P dollar and that's exactly the same, right? If I grab my calculator again. So as you can see here, we just found a quicker way to do the same thing so we have a slow path and a faster path let's have a look at the code again oops <laughs> that's not what i want see multiply by two and then add multiply by two and then add second example so in here we are trying to add two variables which are eight bytes each working on four bytes register and how is it going to work well it is going to work because we're using two addition instructions the first one is going to add the first part of the number while the second part is going to add the second part and the carry bit like it would happen on a normal addition if you do it with pen and paper, right? So, let's see step, step by step. We see that we're moving the first variable into the register. And then we're using the second part of the variable into the second register. And then we are adding 
the first part of the second variable to the complete variable one and then we are adding the second part of the second number to the previous result plus the carry bit and here we are getting the result let's see what happens when we compile this no error that's good okay so I will place breakpoint here, then I will run it. And then I will go like this P X dollar E A X. Okay. And then I will do I will go step. Then I will repeat the same with A D X. And I'm actually getting one ABC, right? Which is, is this one. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we go all the way here. And I do hex That's the ampersand which gets the address of the label. And that's exactly the number that you would get if you were using a calculator adding these two numbers over here. So, as you can see, it worked. And the last example for today. So we have a, quite a few things going on here, but what I want to show you is this unsigned division. And then we have 59 divided by 19. And we're going to get the result in AL while the modulus is going to be in AH. This is what I want to show you now. So I'm going to be building the example. And then we have the debugger. NOP doesn't do anything. It's basically a not instruction. I'm just putting there because I want to show you something more. Then I do run. Now I can do print the content of AL, which is 3. Perfect. And then print the content of AH, which is the modulo. And even this is correct. So it worked. So I would say that for today, this will be all. I hope you've enjoyed my class and please like this video, subscribe and thank you very much.